Welcome to the Free State for round four of the 2024 South African Rally Raid Championship, where all the action is brought to you by Toyota, hashtag Team Hilux Rally Raid, Ford, Castrol, and ICAB. This weekend was a cracker, a double header that could well be the turning point in the season. Welcome back to Rally Raid Racing with the Inco Parace 400, the first of two races that took place back to back on the weekend of the 16th and 17th of August. The South African Rally Raid Championship continued with its fourth round, the Inco Parace 400, held on the 16th of August 2024. The event was hosted at the picturesque Stonehenge River Lodge, nestled on the banks of the Val River near the Free State town of Parace. Known for its scenic beauty and challenging terrain, Parace presented the perfect backdrop for the teams to test their mettle in what was expected to be a fast-paced and unforgiving race. The weather conditions were harsh, with temperatures plunging to a freezing minus 6 degrees Celsius on the morning of the race. The cold, combined with the dry, windless conditions, meant that dust would be a significant factor throughout the day, adding another layer of difficulty for the competitors. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's take a moment to catch up with the SARC's Archie Rutherford with some insight into the weekend. The, the venue, we're trying this venue, it's a much bigger venue. Our sport has grown quite a bit in the last few years, so we need more space. So I think it's going to work well. For Inco Tools, coming on board as an event partner to the SARC was a brave move, though the company is no stranger to the world of rally raid racing, as Bridget Tayson explains. So our relationship started with SA Rally Raid through Toyota Gazoo Racing. So the ethos of the, the TGR team and the ethos of the SA Rally Raid comes together and fits perfectly with the ethos of, of INCO. The toughness of the tools, the tools can take a beating, they're out there in the field with the mechanics, that's, that's how we align perfectly with them. Go big or go home and that's our, that's our method. But before we go racing in Paris, let's take a look at the championship standings after round three. As the teams prepared for the Inco Paris 400, the championship standings after three rounds revealed a tightly contested battle at the top. Toyota Gazoo Racing's Henk Lartigan led the standings with 75 points, followed by his teammate Janil de Villiers, who had amassed 59 points. Guy Bottrell, another Toyota Gazoo Racing driver, was in fourth place with 51 points, a single point behind Ford's Lance Woolridge on 52. Bashir Blakno from Team Hilux Rally Raid was in 5th place with 45 points, closely followed by Gareth Woolridge, the defending champion with 35. Clearly the competition was fierce as the teams headed into Round 4. The Inco Paris 400 was an opportunity for drivers to solidify their positions or make significant gains in the standings, especially given the double-header format. The stage was set for an intense and competitive race with several teams eager to either maintain their lead or climb up the leaderboard. Despite a tough start to the season, TGRSA's Hank Lonergan found himself at the top of the 2024 SARC standings after three rounds. It's a, a very interesting year, but I mean the competition is right up there, so it's, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a good weekend. Teammate Janil de Villiers was 16 points adrift in second place and acutely aware of the value that the Parais weekend held to the championship. Yeah, two, two races to go this weekend. Uh, it's going to be very challenging. Um, yeah, this area is um, always very dusty, um, quite a bit of rocks over here. Lance Woolridge flying the flag for Ford was just seven points behind de Villiers, leaving him well in touch with the title race. A good result here in Paris could well see the men from the Blue Oval challenge for a second consecutive SARC. I think it's going to be a watershed moment this, this weekend, you know, after full double points on offer. Uh, seeing who, who does well and who doesn't and who doesn't finish, for instance, is going to have massive effects on the championship. But Woolridge would have to do more than aim for the top step of the podium. He'd have to keep his nose clean, as TGRSA's Guy Bartrell was also in the hand for more points, having shone earlier in the season. Very important. Uh, I think this will be probably the decider. It's a double header, so there's double points up for, for sale. So hopefully we can grab as many as we can. Finally, for Shea Blakno, in yet another Toyota Hilux T1 Plus rounded out the top five in the championship standings. The big man has found a lot of form this year and was flying the flag for the privateer entries despite his modest approach. 
I think we had some luck on our side. Some of the uh, top runners didn't uh, finish in the last races. But yeah, we're just here to enjoy it and give our best. And with that, it was time to go racing. The Enco Perez 400 began with a short but intense 1.5 kilometer Castrol qualifying race on a freezing morning with temperatures plunging to minus 6 degrees Celsius. Given the brief nature of the qualifying course, the organizers applied a 10 times multiply to the results to better reflect the performance and differentiate the teams ahead of the main event. The cold, windless conditions meant that dust would play a significant role, hanging in the air and severely reducing visibility for the drivers. For Sheehan Batsis Blickner and the Team Hilux Rally Ray Toyota Deco Hilux T1 Plus set the fastest time in the qualifying race, clocking in at 16 minutes and 45 seconds, the adjusted time with the multiplier. This placed them at the top of the standings for the qualifying stage, but they were closely followed by Jaden Els and Johan Swimmer in the King Prize Extreme SVR, who finished just two seconds behind. Chris Fiss and Albantis Fenter driving the Redline Motorsport Revo T1 Plus GTR were not far off, finishing third with a time of 17 minutes and 5 seconds, just 20 seconds behind the leaders. TGRSA's Janiel de Villiers and Alvin Fonk finished in fourth place, clocking in at 17 minutes and 6 seconds, 21 seconds behind the Blickner brothers. Rounding out the top five were Ibn Basson and Leander Pinar in their hashtag Team Hilux Rally Ray Toyota Hilux, who completed the qualifying race in 17 minutes and 10 seconds, placing them 25 seconds behind the leaders and first of the adventurer class cars. The remaining positions in the top 10 went to Gareth Woolridge and Boyd Dreher, Rince Hofstra and Wade Harris, and Henk Lardegan and Brett Cummings. Johan and Van Horn were ninth, and Puck Klaassen and Sharon Moore rounded out the top 10 with a time of 17 minutes and 55 seconds. The qualifying race provided a preview of what was to come with a fast, flat-out route that was not without its hazards. The dust clouds that lingered in the air and the unexpected rocks that lay hidden along the course would prove to be significant challenges for the competitors. Let's take a quick look at those numbers again. Fushia and Batsis Blickner led the pack, setting the fastest adjusted time of 16 minutes and 45 seconds. Close behind them were Jaden Els and Johan Swemmer. Chris Viss and Albantis Fenter secured third place with a time of 17 minutes and 5 seconds, followed closely by Janiel de Villiers and Alvin Fonk in fourth, just one second behind Fisser. Rounding out the top five were Ian Basson and Leander Pinar. After the qualifying race, the top 10 teams drew for their starting positions for the first stage of the main event. The draw saw Alz and Swimmer launching as the first car on the road, with Gareth Woolridge and Dreyer second. The San Fenter would guard as the third car, followed by Basson and Pinar. Horstra and Harris, the Horn brothers, Klaassen and Moore, Lartigan and Cummings, and De Villiers and Fonk. The Blickner brothers would be 10th on the road, a position that brought both advantages and challenges given the dust and visibility conditions. The rest of the field would have to contend with the lingering dust kicked up by those ahead, adding another layer of complexity to the already tough race. But before we get to the actual race, let's take a moment to find out what those chaps with the laptops do at the races. You know, the nerds who walk around and plug the machines into the race cars every chance they get. Uh, my name's Connor Jones. I'm a race engineer for the team. Basically, we pull data from the car. Um, during the short service, it's very important that we check the main things like engine oil pressure, engine temperature, um, currents coming from the PDM. I think very, very important for the team to just relay information back from the drivers to the mechanics and just understand what's happening in the car. Matthew Thursby, I'm the head engineer at Redline International. So a lot of the hard work is done before the event. 
Yeah, we're just doing uh, just maintenance, just checking if everything's running as it should, you know. Um, we're not going to reinvent the wheel over the weekend. We just need to check that everything's within the parameters we specified. Maybe scratch a little bit here and there for some power. Um, but other than that, all the hard work's done back at the shop. Uh, there is a small team of us, um, but I think we, we split it between chassis data and engine data. We both look at the same stuff, but uh, sort of you'll have one person looking at engine stuff more importantly, and then one person looking at the rest of the chassis of the car. So your, other, your drive chain components, your gearbox, your diffs, your brake temperatures, all of that stuff. My name is Sholto Wright. I am the racing engineer for Neil Rouge Motors. The last thing I want to see is knock. Um, as soon as you see knock, uh, that's, that's when you know that the engine's about to go, um, or if a turbo is starting to go, because we only have 30 minutes to replace the turbo. Um, because the turbo comes in at about 700 degrees, you, you can't work with them, you can't touch it. You just have to kind of let them continue like that. <laughs> if you were going to put a single sense on a car, it would be engine oil pressure. Or oh, low oil pressure, that's the engine. Good night, sweetheart. So we make sure that we have oil pressure first and foremost, uh, and check that we have high oil pressure at high RPM. If we tick that box, then we move to temperatures and stuff like that. Okay. Well, we have to inform our chief mechanics what's going on, um, and then we try and and then we try and optimize the car at this point. Either we have to change something, or for example, with Guy at the moment, he came in with a really, really hot diff. So first things first, take the diff out, put a new one in. Well, obviously we're trying to optimize the car. I mean, in different environments, you have different temperatures and stuff like that. But I think mainly what we do is before the race, we make sure that we run through all of the, we let the car run, check that everything is in spec, and then I guess when we come to pre-event testing, it's the same thing after each, after each test, after each loop. We check all the data, make sure there's nothing wrong, and make sure the car's in its best performance. And now that you know how all of that works, it's finally time to go racing. The Inco Parade 400 consisted of two challenging loops of approximately 193 kilometers each, making up the 386 kilometer distance of the Inco Parade 400. The Val River region's fast, dusty tracks, combined with the hidden rocks and narrow passages, promised a tough battle. The competitors would need to balance speed with caution, especially given the windless conditions that left dust lingering in the air, further complicating visibility. Jaden Ells and Johan Swim in the King Price Extreme SVR faced a tough day. Starting in first place after the draw, they battled through the challenging conditions. By the end of the first loop, they were running 10th with a time of 2 hours 43 minutes and 13 seconds. As the day progressed, the dust and tricky terrain continued to challenge them, and despite their efforts, they ended up in 10th place overall, finishing with a time of 5 hours 17 minutes and 33 seconds. This marked Swimmer's first points as a navigator in the SARC, a significant milestone despite the tough conditions. Obviously with the new navigator, the, the trust wasn't there yet, but um, the second loop um, went 100%. Rince Hofstra and Wade Harris started fifth on the road in their Redline Motorsport Revo T1 Plus GTR. And after the first loop, they were sitting in eighth place with a time of 2 hours, 40 minutes and 41 seconds. They maintained a steady pace throughout the day, navigating the tricky terrain with caution. At the end of the day, they had secured ninth place overall with a time of 5 hours, 16 minutes and 36 seconds, demonstrating consistency and reliability in their performance. One of the day's standout performers was Gary Berthold and Donnie Stassen in their Toyota DKR Hilux T1 Plus. The pair moved up the order significantly after starting in 14th place. By the end of the day, they had climbed to 8th place with a time of 5 hours, 15 minutes and 26 seconds. A solid performance by the veteran driver and his highly experienced navigator. Chris Fiss and Blicky Spender started in ninth position after the draw and maintained a solid pace throughout the first loop, finishing it in seventh place with a time of 2 hours 40 minutes and 2 seconds. However, the second loop proved to be just as challenging, and despite their best efforts, they finished the day in seventh place overall, clocking in at 5 hours, 12 minutes and 36 seconds in their redlined Motorsport Revo T1 Plus GTR. Their performance was consistent, but they'll be looking to find more speed in the upcoming rounds. Yeah, we just tried to stay out of trouble, but yeah, it was good. Yeah. Like I said the car's good, and yeah. Woolridge Motorsport Ford NWM Ranger T1 Plus of Gareth Woolridge and Boyd Dreher was off to a flying start, setting the fastest time after the first loop with 2 hours 35 minutes and 42 seconds. 
However, the dusty conditions and a puncture in the second limp thwarted their chances of holding onto the lead. Despite these setbacks, they fought hard and finished the stage in sixth place overall with a time of 5 hours, 10 minutes and 37 seconds. The time lost to the puncture was costly, but their strong performance in the first loop highlighted their potential. Oh, look, it's good fun. It's really fast. Um, the car's handling it unbelievably, I must say. I was a little bit worried about this event because generally it suits our opposition a bit more. But uh, the car feels great. I don't feel I could push it more. The Inco Perez 400 saw better performance from Sahud Variao and François Cazalet. The TGRSA crew had struggled to finish races this season, but they maintained a competitive pace throughout the day in Perez. After completing the first loop in fourth place with a time of 2 hours, 37 minutes and 46 seconds, they continued to push hard in the second loop. Despite the challenging conditions, they secured fifth place overall with a time of 5 hours, 8 minutes and 37 seconds. This result marked a significant improvement for Variao and Cazalet, who were eager to build on this performance in the coming rounds. It's a pretty, the second loop we had uh, a puncher and no aircon from the start, so uh, I think it was a decent day, a good finish. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how tomorrow goes. The Blickmo brothers, Fushi and Battis, and the hashtag Team Hilux Rally Raid Toyota Hilux T1 Plus started strong, finishing the first loop in sixth place with a time of 2 hours, 39 minutes and 40 seconds. However, the second loop saw them make up ground, pushing hard to close the gap on the leaders. They finished in fourth place overall, just 11 seconds behind the third place team, with a total time of 5 hours, 6 minutes and 38 seconds. Their performance was a testament to their skill and determination, showing great form from the burly driver and his brother. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap down with the qualifying. I almost rolled my bucket this morning, so I'll take it easy tomorrow. And so to the podium spots. Janil de Villiers and Alvin Fonk had a steady start in their TGRSA Toyota Hilux, completing the first loop in ninth place with a time of 2 hours, 41 minutes and 3 seconds. However, their experience and tactical approach paid off in the second loop as they managed to make up significant time. They finished the day in third place overall, just 21 seconds behind the second place team, with a time of 5 hours, 6 minutes and 27 seconds. Their consistency and ability to navigate the tough terrain were crucial to their strong finish, and the Wiley de Villiers was clearly staying in the hand for championship honours. It was a tough day. Um, you know, yeah, it's always flat out. It's, uh, you know, this, this, uh, you, it's, it's just so fast. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't make mistakes here. Championship leaders Henk Ladekan and Brett Cummings were running second after the first loop with a time of 2 hours, 36 minutes and 32 seconds, just 50 seconds behind Gareth Woolridge. The works Toyota Hilux crew pushed hard in the second loop, maintaining a blistering pace despite the challenging conditions. However, puncture mid-stage cost them valuable time, and they finished just 1 minute and 58 seconds behind the winners with a time of 5 hours, 6 minutes and 6 seconds. The performance was admirable and kept them firmly in the championship race. gave ourselves a bit of a handicap with a with a punch on the on the first lap and then it was tricky to get past in the dust. We also made one or two mistakes so we can only blame ourselves or I can blame myself. But it was TGRSA's Guy Bottrell and Dennis Murphy who had the most remarkable day. Starting from 19th position after challenging qualifying session, they worked their way up through the field with precision and speed. After the first loop, they were sitting in 5th place with a time of 2 hours, 38 minutes and 13 seconds. They continued to push hard in the second loop, overcoming the dust and tricky conditions to finish as the overall winners of the day with a time of 5 hours, 4 minutes and 8 seconds. This victory marked their first of the season and solidified their status as serious contenders for the championship. Yeah, really excited. Uh, good to get a win under our belt uh, this season. We've been second three times, uh, so to get a first place is really good. Um, and especially after this morning's uh, prologue, which we didn't have the best of runs, but uh, it all it all worked out. And uh, Dennis was really good on the notes. Uh, we had a fantastically clean run and uh, really quick. So uh, really happy with uh, the whole team's performance. It was really good. 
While the top 10 celebrated their successes, several other crews faced significant challenges that prevented them from achieving higher finishes or even completing the race. Notably, Eben Basson and Leander Pinar were running 9th after the first loop, with a time of 2 hours 41 minutes and 3 seconds. They finished just outside the top 10 in 11th place overall, a mere 5 seconds behind Jaden Nels and Johan Swenner. Despite this, they secured their second consecutive class victory of the season, continuing their dominance in the Adventurer T1 class. Lance Woolridge and Kenny Gilbert in their NWM Ranger T1 Plus were forced to retire after a dramatic rollover just 100 kilometers into the stage. The incident ended their hopes of a strong finish and dealt a blow to their championship aspirations. I felt the steering starting to move a bit more and more and getting sort of feedback. And then we turned left through our gate and the, the car just tucked and rolled over. So I think something had worked itself loose from the suspension. Uh, so we'll have to have a look now. Um, but we just considering it's a double header, didn't want to carry on and do a damage uh, for tomorrow. So rather spend the time fixing it than go full gas tomorrow again. The Horn brothers, Johan and Van, are also had a day to forget, with mechanical issues forcing them to retire from the race. This season has been marred by similar problems, and this latest setback added to their frustrations. Daniel Schroeder and Henry Kiena. In their WCT VW Amarok faced an unfortunate end to their race when they damaged their vehicle after hitting a fence post, preventing them from completing the stage. This was another tough break for the team who have struggled to reach the finish line on a number of occasions this season. Obviously uh, misjudging the width of the car there a little bit and uh, hitting the post at full speed. So, yeah. Jürgen Schroeder and Rukas Ferri were sidelined by a possible broken drivetrain, ending their race prematurely. While Rick van den Brink and Hedo Heymans in the Century Racing CR7 ID Twin Turbo faced a similar fate, with mechanical and electrical issues forcing them to retire. The tough conditions of the Inco Parais 400 took their toll on many competitors, highlighting the unforgiving nature of rally raid racing. While some teams thrived under the pressure, others face setbacks that will require significant recovery efforts as they look ahead to the next round. Here's confirmation of the Inco Parais 400 results, with Bottrell and Murphy taking top honors. Lars Gunn and Cummings took second place, with De Villiers and Fong completing the all TGRSA podium. The Blickner brothers came in fourth, with Variawa and Kazale rounding out the top five. It was a power performance by Toyota who dominated the race in resounding fashion. The Inco Parais 400 proved to be a demanding and unforgiving race, with dust, rocks and challenging terrain testing the metal of every competitor. The windless conditions exacerbated the dust problem, making visibility a key issue throughout the day. Despite the difficulties, several teams rose to the occasion, with Guy Bottrell and Dennis Murphy claiming their first victory of the season in a dramatic comeback from 19th place. The Toyota Gazoo Racing team dominated the podium, with Hank Lodekan and Brett Cummings, and Janelle de Villiers and Alpine Fonk rounding up the top three. Join us again next week for all the action from the second day of the Parais doubleheader, the Inco Vol 400. This race, as with the Inco Parais 400, brought plenty of twists and turns, not only in the race route, but also in the way the results unfolded. We'll see you here in a week's time to bring you the highlights from Round 5 of the 2024 SARC. All the action from the first day of the 2024 Parais doubleheader was brought to you by Toyota. Hashtag Team Hilux Rally Raid, Ford, Castrol and ICAM, in association with the SARC.